Just before we start the show, I want to take an opportunity to invite you to join me for the Podfluence Weekly Newsletter, which is available both on LinkedIn and through the official newsletter channel. Now, if you are on LinkedIn and it's easier for you to follow there, then please just click on the link in the show notes, which will take you straight to Podfluence on LinkedIn, where you can subscribe for free and get weekly updates on Podfluence articles as well as episodes. If you would like to subscribe to the full newsletter where you'll get additional materials and, as my little incentive to you, my pre-podcast guest checklist for you to use when you're appearing on podcast shows so that you can be fully prepared every single time, then please click the link to the official newsletter in the show notes. Hope to see you there. Let's get on with the show. In this week's show, we start a series of going behind the scenes in the speaker industry. And we're starting that off by speaking with marketing expert, Lauren Pibworth. I know you're going to enjoy this show. Lauren shares a lot of great content. She's a wonderful person to speak to, and she was a great guest. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a coffee or whatever you like to drink and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Loki Podcast with John Ball from Present Influence. We use Buzzsprout to upload and distribute the Loki Podcast to all major podcasting networks. If you're thinking of starting your own podcast, check out the link to Buzzsprout in the show notes. You could start your podcast today. I'm very happy today to welcome to the show a special guest in the form of a marketing expert known as Lauren Pibworth. Lauren is among the most successful marketing agents exclusively for speakers in North America, where she works to create marketing strategies to get more speakers on more stages and has been doing so for the past 13 years. And you're a former marketing chair on the board of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. You love scuba diving. That's, uh, that's really cool. I like scuba diving. You've never really done it a few times. And, uh, of course, your husband and your two miniature schnauzers, but not in that order, you say. <laughs> so, uh, so I know that this is going to be a lot of fun. I know that you're very dedicated to what you do. I also know that I asked you to be on the podcast because on LinkedIn, I think you put out so much amazing content, and if people aren't following you there, they should be. So please, let's officially welcome to the Loki podcast, Lauren Bidworth. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really delighted that you said yes to being on my podcast, and one of many recent examples I have of sometimes you just have to ask the question, to, to and you never know what might happen just to get a, to get a result. I was so thrilled that you said yes. Well, you know what, and I, I really believe with all, with all my heart that if you don't ask, you don't get, and that we put, we put other people on pedestals based on our own experience, but they don't actually live there, right. and so it's, you know, we, we, we think we're, someone thinks we're all that in a bag of chips, and we just think we're us, so I was, I was just happy to be asked. Uh, I, I was really, really delighted and I really wanted to ask you because I'd started following some of the stuff that you were posting out from some of the people who we are mutually connected to have been liking your posts and now I've started liking your posts because you, you have a lot of great marketing information and not just your own, you also share other people's great marketing stuff as well. So I mean, that is great too. Is don't you know you, you you know that there are you're putting other experts up there as well and taking all the best bits of information and putting your own takes and your own marketing stuff out as well. I love that. I, I love that. Is that it's a lot of value and it shows that you have a really broad scope of your focus there. I just think it's all about service. Um, I am absolutely dedicated to doing everything I can to help professional speakers grow their business because you guys are out there front line changing the world. And if I can have a small part in that, then I'm just happy to happy to hide behind my own curtain and clap loudly as you guys go forth and do it. Well, I, I think I speak for myself and many other people who already know you that yeah, we, we're very happy to have you on our side and clapping for us. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I'd like to ask you then, how, how did you end up becoming a marketer specifically for public speakers? Well, it's funny. Um, I, 
I worked in advertising for several years and I really have a passion for branding and marketing and, and making sure that, you know, understanding how all that works. And when, um, 13 years ago on Valentine's day, my husband came home and said, honey, I've lost my job. Um, company a bought company B and I'm out of work. And I said, don't worry, sweetheart. I've just been nominated for employee of the year at the agency where I'm working at. And then we lost a huge client and a knee jerk reaction. And I was let go the next week. Oh my goodness. We had just bought a house. So we looked at each other and went, uh, <laughs> so I embarked on this whole idea of on entrepreneurship because I live about two hours out of the city and I didn't want to keep commuting. So I being very methodical, I made a list of all the things I was really, really good at all of the things, all of the types of people that I wanted to surround myself with. And then who would pay for those things out of those people? And I landed with speakers 13 years ago, and I made the right choice. I've been in it ever since. Right. So, so had it been that you discovered a, a different market uh, that uh, was hungry for your kind of services, it might have been uh, another area, but you, you found the market that was ready for um, the kind of yeah. thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And and I I just love the energy and enthusiasm um, and, and passion that comes with professional speakers. And it's a great fit because, forgive me, but most of you guys have squirrel syndrome and you're just after the next shiny object thing and you need someone to keep you grounded and focused in, in your business and to handle the marketing for you. Because all, all, most of the speakers that I know, all you want to do is get on stage and speak. And if everything else could happen magically in the background, then that would be perfect. And I do magic. So it just works out that way. You certainly do, and and uh, you're so right. <laughs> you're so right. Um, more than more than happy. Although I do I do a lot of my marketing stuff. I am uh, in the process of, of setting up, uh, um, handing over most of my marketing to an agency now because uh, it gives me the time to create. I want to do more on the podcast. I want to do more public speaking engagements. Although online at the moment and you know, there's just so many more things that I want to do and get out there and having those things taken care of for me uh, is, is going to make a huge difference and Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. so you I would see that as you you are someone who enables people to especially speakers right now to have their best speaker life exactly we plan the strategy and we implement the strategy and then you go out and reap the benefits well that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I could set up. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested from from your own personal story. You said that your husband lost the job, you lost the job, and undoubtedly there are a lot of people right now. You know, we've, we've seen in many countries the unemployment numbers are shooting up, and I know I've been through that situation as well. I I, I left the job to start my own business, and then recession hit in the UK, and the things went from bad to worse and nothing was getting off the ground. And um, that those situations are terrifying, really, really quite terrifying. You don't know where you're going to go. You end up in panic mode and it, it can be super depressing. There's so, so much, so much goes on. I went, I went to a very low state when all that was going on in my life. Uh, and I imagine you may have some similar experiences. What would you what would you say though for anybody now who is who is going through that kind of experience that might be listening? Um, I relied a lot on my faith. I I believed that, um, and I still believe that um, when you're when you find yourself in in in, in a dark hallway waiting for something, the reason it's so dark is because what's on the other side is so is so bright. Um, so I, I just believe that there's always something better ahead and I plotted forward. That has been my attitude for my 50 some odd years so far on this earth. Um, and I, I, I would say to just give yourself the time you need to grieve the loss because it is a grief process. Um, be kind to yourself, 
but also remember that the energy that you take forward into whether you're looking at for a new career or you're launching your business, the energy that you bring forward comes into that room. So if you're depressed, if you're angry, do what you can to stuff it in a little box for a, for a little while while you're in a face-to-face selling um, opportunity and and an interview is one and starting your own business is one um, to just try and keep that positive, not happy, but just positive, enthusiastic energy with you. And I think you'll find that that carries you a long way. I think so. I, I do think I agree. It's really important to hold on to that belief that bet there are better things ahead and, and to remember that as terrible as it might seem right now, this is temporary and it's not going to last and, and things things will change. And if you want them to change quicker, it's going to happen quicker if you have a better mindset about it. And I know one of the things that helped me turn a corner when I was at my lowest was a, a coach friend of mine encouraging me to focus find some things to be grateful for. And it was that gratitude practice, which I still do every single day, that actually turned me around. At first, I was just finding ridiculous things. I didn't think there was anything good. But then with a bit of time, started finding some bigger things to feel grateful for. And then realizing that that switched me into focusing on what was still good and um, it was just that small thing of uh, well, you can either focus on everything that's bad or you can f- focus on the things that are good. doesn't mean you ignore the bad stuff that's going on, but it means at least you're more focused and spending more of your time and energy on the stuff that is going to make you feel better and going to give you a, a better result. So, yeah, I think that's really important. I, I, I know it's a bit of a maybe a, a sidebar to what we had planned to talk about today, but I think it's a, <laughs> an important area. And just from, from what came up in your story, I wanted to, to touch on it. Coming back to maybe more towards speakers and marketing, there are definitely some challenges right now for speakers, especially in terms of like live events. We've talked about this a bit with uh, with Cindy Ashton and with Jason Reed on recent calls. And um, so I want to talk about you, because I, I don't think you have, uh, from what we've spoken about, you have some good uh, insights and some thoughts about where people should be focusing right now, which I think are probably relevant to more than just professional speakers as well. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm I'm in I'm in a situation now where um pretty much 80% of my clients are now unemployed, right? They've watched their their um gigs disappear from the calendar and they had that you know gut wrench reaction of oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But I I believe wholeheartedly just as um just as the car was a was an absolutely driving force towards how to, how the world changed. I think that this this pandemic situation will be the same kind of catalyst. I think it's going to force creativity and innovation and technology advances like we have never seen. Right. So I set out to solve the problem. Of, and, and right now, everyone's like, oh, just take your entire business online. You'll be fine. Well, no, no, you won't. Um, and, and the other thing that I just want to just before I get into this, I want to I want to just remind everyone that what um, what was will never be again. Mm-hmm. What is is temporary. And what will be is beautiful. So let's just go forth with that with that attitude. So I wanted to solve the problem um, that my clients were telling me that even if they did get a virtual gig, even if they were able to, to deliver their keynote on Zoom, the um, the meeting planners and the corporations are paying anywhere from thirty to fifty percent of their fee. Right. So even if you are working. A lot of a lot of my clients are finding that their income is cut in half or more, and that was a problem that I really thought needed solving. Um, even if you are incredibly good, and and you know I hear this all all the time, my intellectual property is my intellectual property, and it is valuable. 
darn it. But it's only valuable if the market will pay it. Yes. And and so <laughs> you've got to find a way to to bring back the income in, in, in into your business. So one of the things I've been looking at is um, two things. Number one, how do we how do we deliver virtual better? But number two, if in fact the market continues to pay a lower fee for virtual, um, then how what else can we do to increase our income? Mm. So a, a few things that I've I've been playing with is the idea of using and I, I'm gonna call it a membership site, but understand when I'm marketing it, we're calling it an online learning portal. We're going to change the language around it because a membership site, the the connotation now is something that you pay for monthly that you go into every now and then, and there's a little bit of stuff in there, but whatever. Yeah. But an online learning portal, wow, that just sounds so much better, sure. right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're talking to our clients about, okay, so you've got company X and they're, they want a virtual keynote. So you're going to deliver the best virtual keynote that you possibly can, understanding that technology is going to change and you're going to get better and you're going to get a studio and Amazon will eventually deliver that webcam that you've been really, really asking for for the last two months, mm-hmm. and, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to deliver that, but how can we then package something to add value that is minimal work for you? So we've been playing with the idea of a keynote that leads into a one-year opportunity to work with that client on an ongoing basis. So the, the keynote is delivered and it lives in their online learning portal. But then we've got the opportunity to deliver monthly webinars and and all of this is is going to be dependent on your business right Mm -hmm. quarterly webinars monthly q a's um we can develop um, a motivational uh, marketing series that is delivered to your employees that keeps you top of mind Um, you can offer online coaching you can develop two tiers where you've got stuff for the people who are in the audience and then stuff for your senior executives to then implement the stuff that you've taught to the audience. There's just unlimited ways now to continue engagement. So all of a sudden, you know, the speech that was 5,000, you're now getting 2,000 for. Well, they'll pay 5,000 now to have access to that speech for a year. Right. And all this extra stuff. So instead of making the same, you're actually making more. And most of the stuff that you're adding into the portal is stuff that you're going to reuse for client after client after client after client. Well, that's a really great way of thinking about it. And uh, I know a lot of people are fed up of hearing the P word, but I mean, it's an important pivot in your business. And uh, uh, and I think that is the kind of thing where, that people need to be thinking about. From what you've been, the people from the people you've been working with so far, and from what you've been doing with with your own clients, do you get some sort of sense about what kind of content that people and uh, uh, corporations are, are buying and hungry for at the moment? Absolutely. Um, and what's interesting is, depending on the portal, on the the uh, technology that you choose to use, one of the things that's gaining popularity huge right now is the ability to uh, create what what the company views as their custom place so we we create a a membership site and then the dashboard is cloned and it's got all of the clients language all of the clients logos so you're selling them their custom like um TD Canada Trust has their own special membership site for their clients and it's theirs and they're they're presenting it as a client as a employee benefit but ultimately all you've done is clone the same thing that you've made and put their logo on it and now you can clone it again and put the other bank's logo on it and clone it again and put someone else's logo on it so you're reselling the same product 
over and over again. But the, the, the perception to the client is that it's custom to them. And, and it is custom to them, right. right? It is. It's got all of their information on it. But you don't have to keep recreating custom content for each client. That, that's a really great way of thinking, thinking about it and something that in other ways that I, I've been doing myself in, in my, my coaching and training business for, uh, for the last 10 years or so in terms of creating digital assets. Now, I haven't done that for specific companies or, or brands at the moment. So that's something you've got me thinking about now. But, uh, but I can see how that would be, have a lot of value for them as well. And for, for speakers, absolutely, to be thinking about how do you create digital assets because you need to, whilst you also want to protect your intellectual property, uh, you also need to be making sales and putting stuff out there. Absolutely. Um, the other, just one other example that is really hot right now with a couple of my clients, um, this particular client deals with shift workers. So she's got a series of, um, uh, products for the shift worker, but she also teaches companies how to manage a shift work environment understanding that you can't run a 24-7 workplace as if it was nine to five. There, there's, there's some really key differences. You can't have all your meetings at, at 12 o'clock noon, yeah. right? Because either <laughs> you're going to, half your workforce is never going to see it or they go home for four hours, drag their butt back in and then workplace accidents and so on and so forth. So um, what she's done is she's created um, a, 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 an online learning platform for the shift workers, another one for the companies, but then the platform that she's built for the shift workers, again, she's rebranding to that company and reselling that. So you can, if you're an individual, you can buy it. Or if you're a company, you can buy it for all of your workers. And again, it, it's a company benefit. Um, and the nice thing about creating these type of learning portals is that you have an opportunity to consistently be top of mind. Right. You have an opportunity to, um, you know, if you're developing a new keynote, well, all of a sudden your quarterly webinars are around the ideas of these, this, this new keynote, teasing, dropping little hints. And then you can say to the people, you can, you can use the opportunity of questions and answers to find out what their employees are really curious about. And all of a sudden you've got a new program that you can prove the employees are hungry for. Like it's just that it's a data gathering slash revenue generating slash value driven opportunity. That's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. One one thing uh, the other the other day I know you saw this because you commented on LinkedIn. I, I did a quiz on your website that told me that I was uh, my marketing spirit animal was a wolf. Now I, I never normally do online quizzes, but yours looked. I wanted to know. I, I really wanted to know, and it was useful and also a little bit. Oh, I've got some work to do. <laughs> I need, I need to, Part of the point. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to be making some sales and uh, I, I know maybe that encouraged a few other people to, to do that test as well it was an intriguing way to sort of come into uh, come into some of what what you're doing because you know, there was some really important follow-up there and the quiz actually gave me back some some important things that I need to be thinking about and, and working on I just want to ask you a bit more about about the quiz and perhaps why you, why you use the quiz and, uh, and I, thought, I thought it was incredible. So I, mean, I guess that's partly why you're using it. But uh, just to get a, a bit more of a picture about about that and where it fits for you in your marketing. Absolutely. Well, um, at last year's uh, convention for the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, I actually presented on using quizzes as an opt-in um, lead lead generation tool. And I mean, obviously you have to have quizzes on your site if you're going to talk about it, but I, I really, I, I developed the quiz as a fun way 
to get to know me and my sense of humor, which I hope you got when you yeah. went, went, when you went through the quiz. Definitely. Um, because my my personality and the experience of Pibworth is a big part of my brand. So I wanted to have the opportunity to kind of wave in your general direction virtually through 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 a quiz. Yeah. but also to help you see any holes that were in your business, which you obviously did. Yes. Um, but the, the quiz is just a, a, a really gentle way of introducing yourself. There is no, there's no sales in the quiz. Um, I, I don't, and you don't have to, you don't have to opt in to get your answers like it's just a very gentle I I hate that when you you go through I mean I I don't take quizzes on Facebook because I know what they're there for yeah. but <laughs> you 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 go through the quiz and you've spent you know you've given three or four minutes of your time to do this they say oh if you want to know the answer you have to give your email mm -hmm. that just makes me angry and so you get you know when you do the quiz you get the answers and if you want a ton more information, then you can opt in and, and get what, what it is, you know, get more information. But I just, I think quizzes are, are fun. They're great lead generation. They work really, really well, at least they have for me. And there's all kinds of different kinds of quizzes too. Um, in fact, I've got a, like a six or seven part blog series on quizzes, how they work, so on and so forth on my website so you can okay. always just pop over and check that out yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very i'm very interested in that and, and i'll put a link in the show notes as well for for that for people to because i think other people might be interested as well i know i've heard um i've heard uh, ryan levest talking about uh, the quizzes as well but i haven't really looked into it very much but but um having done your quiz and found how useful it was i'm thinking yes that is a good thing to be using in marketing lauren i want to ask you if i Let's say I came to you now and I was uh, a new client of yours working with you as a speaker. Can you give me an idea of what, what we would start doing together, what kind of processes and what you would have me thinking about and working on in order to start working with an expert like yourself? Absolutely. And it really would depend on the level of speaker that you were when you, when you came to me. Um, I deal with three, three basic levels of speakers. The, the emerging speaker is someone who has a platform, um, has a great story, really has an idea of their brand, but doesn't have a website presence, doesn't really just need that initial push to launch to start to make money. So those people, um, there's a process that we would go through to help them figure out their brand, figure out their language, um, and then um, a website opportunity. But um, I would say most of my clients are categorized as what I call rising stars. So those are people who've hit an income ceiling mm -hmm. and or a time ceiling, and they realize that they need to monetize better, that there's, you know, something's working. I know I can do this if only. And the rising star level is where we assess what that is only piece is that's missing in your business. So we would do an audit of everything you are doing, everything you could be doing, what you love to do compared to what, what you don't love to do, because we're certainly not going to take something off your plate that you love to do and do well. Um, and then figure out how we can help, what brand tweaks need to be made, what marketing strategies need to be made, whether there's any... Um, business system things that need to ha need to change. Um, what can we automate that you're doing manually? That that sort of thing. Um, and then there's also then there's the the category we call seasoned pros. And if if you're in that category, then you are so overwhelmed with the volume of work coming your way that you are in desperate need of someone to just um, step into your office and run the business. It's an online business management tool. Speaker management, you know, will do all of your marketing, set up all of your automations, run your team. All you need to do is show up and speak. 
Fantastic. So that, that, that's a, a really uh, great scope of offerings there. I, I would love to think that I was in the rising star category, but realistically, I would put myself in the emerging speaker, <laughs> emerging speaker category. So, so let's say that I, I come to you and say, all right, I'm an emerging speaker and I, and I want to work with you. Um, what, what are we going to start talking about and how, we, how are you going to know that I'm the right kind of client that you would want to work with as well? Well, I, I really resonate with business. So um, if, you're, if you're a client who is talking in the marketing realm, in the leadership realm, business development, leadership, culture, that kind of thing, those are the, those are the speaking topics that I understand. Um, I don't have as much success with the purely motivational or purely inspirational speakers, those people would probably be better off choosing an, another agency to work with. Yeah. But when you, when you come to me as, as an emerging speaker, there's um, a series of online um, programs that we would, I would have you work through. There is, and then there would be a, a chance to talk to me and figure out what your next steps would be. Nine times out of 10, it's okay. I need, you know, I, I, I now understand, you know, what I do, who'll pay for it and why. So now I need, I need a, an online presence. So we would move into, in, in, into the website, website area. Great. That's important stuff. And then before, before we started recording, we were having a, a, a little chat. And one of the things saying, which was so true, is about how you know, speakers want to get on with the art of speaking, with the business of speaking. And so really, you know, speakers do need a service like you to, to take care of that because otherwise it's pulling you away. And you know, marketing requires a lot of work, a lot of a lot of effort. There's a lot to it. And it and I know from my own experience, realistically, if you're doing all that by yourself, if you're, especially if you're a one-man band or one-person band, I should say, in business, then um, you're pulling yourself away from some of the important stuff. It's going to be a slower, a slower journey to get to where you really want to be. But work if you can get the money together to work with an expert, and usually there are levels to you can enter into working with people that can get you started and get you progressing quicker. Now I'm just uh, just about to start working, hopefully soon, start working with a marketing agency myself. And I'm already getting a, an idea of the amount of relief that I'm going to have that someone else is going to be taking care of, not all of the marketing. I still need to be involved in it. I still need to put some stuff, uh, energy into it. But they're going to structure it. They're going to plan it. They're going to release it. And, and, exactly. Oh, what yeah. a relief. <laughs> It's, it's so needed and you know maybe uh, uh it's not just necessarily about the the money side of things it really is about the if, if you actually have the time to focus on your time and the stuff that matters you, you know you you may not have to be working uh, 20 hour days or something ridiculous to, to try and make your business work well exactly and if you're able to free up and the trick is if you're going to free up your time if you're going to delegate you have to decide what is the best return on investment for the time that you've delegated. Yeah. So if you're, you know, and, and you know what, it may be crafting that keynote. It may be working on an online product and it may be cuddling your baby, right? It's, it, you have to decide whether you want it to generate revenue for your business or you simply need a little bit of soul nourishing time. Right. One of the first things that I outsourced in my business was, well, there were two things, my books, because I hate doing my own books. Right. And I brought somebody in to clean my house. <laughs> same here. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I would much rather spend two hours a, a week, two, three hours a week, um, either in my office creating or out to dinner with my husband and come home and have a clean house. That and, was worth yeah. it to me. I'm a hundred percent with you there. I had to talk my husband into into getting a cleaner, and we haven't looked back since. Although today's today's actually her first day back after two months of uh, two months of lockdown, where she hasn't been able to been able to work. But I'd much rather 
pay someone who wants to work and, and does a much better job than we did than uh, give up uh, give up half a Sunday every week to have to clean the house right through when uh, actually I, I would really like to be able to relax on that and have a day off. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I get that. And, and uh, having someone else to do your books. And you know, in Spain, we have uh, what they call them, Hestos. They're the people who do, they take care of the legal and the accounting stuff. Fantastic. You know, so having someone who does a good job with all that, I think it's really important. And, and if you're serious about, I, I do think if you're serious about doing business, you have to look at how you're best using your time and can you leverage yourself better. And you know, one of uh, one of my marketing coaches is always singing the praises of like virtual assistants as well. That maybe that's a good thing to look at that isn't too expensive. Uh, and I would definitely say, from from what I've been learning now, and from people, from someone like yourself, hiring a marketing specialist who can really help you advance and knows what works and what doesn't work and knows what's going to get you the certain kind of results is a solid investment and is going to free up a lot of time, mental energy, stress, all sorts of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful service. It's a gift that you're giving <laughs> to people. Uh, and, and I'm sure you're, you're worth every penny and then some. Thank you. What, what are some of the most important things right now that speakers, new or existing, other than membership sites, what, what else should people be thinking about? I think they need to think about how they're going to deliver their content. Um, I mean, the other thing that's happening in the, in the meeting industry that I don't think is going away um, is that I think meetings are going to become hybrids. So they're going to become partly small, um, local meetings live, but there's going to be a live streaming, streaming component. So I think they really need to learn how to present well virtually as well as on camera but I think they need to start looking at speaking as a team effort one of the things that we're we're looking at bringing on for our seasoned pros is actually um, a, a keynote management tool where we will provide someone to handle the chat um, um, engage the audience, understanding that you have to be launching polls, asking questions, doing relevant stuff. But the person who is on the computer needs to know the keynote speaker stuff as well as he does or he, he or she does. So really just becoming, looking at bringing, bringing speaking into a team effort and embracing the technologies that you're going to need to learn to use or bringing someone in who can use the technologies that you're going to have to use and um, just learning, learning to present differently and keeping your mind open because the ideas that I've had are just like a chip off the iceberg. There's so much that is still coming down that will, will adapt and change. I mean, technology today will be completely different than technology six months from now. Sure. Yeah, Guaranteed. We, we, we don't necessarily know what's coming, but we can probably have some reasonable predictions if we stop and think about it. And, you know, I, I'm encouraging a lot of, uh, I do a lot of private coaching and, and group coaching as well, work still. And uh, one of the things I've been encouraging a lot of my clients with, especially the business owner clients to think about is what their clients or their future clients are most likely to be needing six months, 12 months from now, given some of the things that are going to be coming up. You may not get it all right, but you should definitely be thinking about that because you won't get it all wrong either. Well, exactly. I mean, and if, if you're creating a product to solve the need now, when you finally come to market, the need is gone. Right. So you've got to be thinking ahead. And those of us, and, and you've got to hang your hat on something. I have hung my hat on ways to add value instead of cutting our prices for my speakers. Mm. That, is, that is where I'm hanging my hat, add value don't you know don't don't do more virtual gigs continue with the same number of gigs you're doing but make more per gig that's that's where i'm hanging my hat i had to i had to make a choice because if i wait and see how this all pans out and then decide i am months and months behind my competition 
Right. You've got to make a decision and move forward with something now so that when things open up and they will, you will be at least in the race <laughs> instead of I mean, instead of still in the stable. I think that's in, important. These are important things to be thinking about for speakers and for any business owners. And Anybody, yeah. And I would also do we decide to switch gears a little bit and ask you a bit more about perhaps one of your favorite experiences or your greatest success stories of working with clients in what you do? I think one of my, okay, I've got two. One of my favorite success stories is that was with one of our very first speaker clients, um, probably 10 years ago. Um, Chris Cummins came to us and, and he had been working with um, a very no, a notable trainer, um, making tons of money for that individual, delivering that person's content. And he said, I am making, you know, a salary. I want an actual speaking business. Build one for me. Then he turned around and he left. <laughs> <laughs> so with, you know, we, we attended his, we attended his, um, his training sessions, we talked to him and we built him a brand and a business from scratch. He was an awesome speaker and he told us one of his goals was to speak at Disney. So it was about four years after we started to work with him that he called me and he was just vibrating. He's like, guess where I am? I'm on stage. I'm about to deliver to Disney. I'm so excited. <laughs> and that was just that amazing feeling to know that we had had a hand in that. Um, and I think the other one is from a testimonial that I received from a client probably about four years ago, three, four years ago. And to me, it just encaps encapsulates everything Pibworth. And she said, you know, Lauren, working with you and your team is like being enveloped in a warm hug of knowledge and support. That's nice. I, th I, th I still, to this day, my husband gets mad at me, but that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me, including him. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to work a bit harder on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that is some nice feedback to get from a, from a client. Wow. Love it. And that's, that's what we endeavor to deliver, right? Is that we are smarter marketing, yeah. but we're, we deliver it with care, right? That's, it's the experience of working with us that makes us different. Yeah, There's all kinds of people who can do the, who can deliver the same services we do. Right. There's all kinds of people that can deliver the same services you do. And everyone else there does. Yeah. But what's different is how they feel when they get it. Indeed. So. If it's not too personal, what's your big why or one of your big whys for, for why you do what you do? Um, it's funny. It has changed. So when I first started this business, I developed an online agency because um, my husband and I were trying to adopt a child and I wanted a baby more than I wanted. Well, I would have given my right arm for one. Um, so I built a business so that I could be home with the baby. No baby, but now my why is, I, I think it's just being able to be part of something that is changing the world. The, 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 the speakers that I work with have such beautiful stories and such amazing results with their audiences. And when they call me and they're like, oh, you know, because of the, 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 um, the platform that you put out and this series of the way I'm writing, I attracted this client and I just got the most amazing testimonial from them. And this is the change that I give. And that was, you know, that was with their talent, but they got it because of me. And that just feels awesome. Great. 
I have a, on my whiteboard next to me, you can't see it here in the cafe Loki, but uh, on my whiteboard next to me, I have a list of marketing resources. I'm, I think I'm going to have to put your name on the bottom there as well. <laughs> on the bottom? Oh, hey. sorry, I'll put you on the top. It's just because there's <laughs> the bottom. That's the only reason. Oh, the, the top. <laughs> But I'm going to have to add you to the list uh, because you, you do have uh, such great material, and, and I do recommend anybody to come and find you on, on Facebook and, and find you find you online and find that out for themselves. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, the best ways for people to contact you in a moment. But what uh, one thing I like to ask my guests because I believe learning is super important, and I'm sure you do too because you you share so much great content that people can le- learn from on your website and online as well. Um, what would be a book that you would recommend to people who are looking to grow, develop themselves, uh, in, particularly in the speaking area? Clockwork. It's my favorite book. Mike McCulloch. Yep. Yep. It's all about, because marketing is a, ser- it's a series of systems delivered with creativity. And I am a huge fan of systems automation and figuring out the best way to serve and a clockwork is my favorite my favorite I, book i love that book too I'm, I'm very happy that mike's going to be on the show in a, in a few weeks so um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well i will be listening with bated breath he's <laughs> my heroes <laughs> yeah he's uh, he's incredible i've got 20 minutes with him but i'm, I'm gonna make it count that's for sure so one, one more thing before we before we start to wrap things up what would be a, a, a final thought that you would like to leave people with from today's call, from some things we talked about and maybe where people should be putting their focus right now? I think it, well, I think I, I kind of already said it is that you have to do something. Um, do your research, make a decision that is as informed as possible and begin to move forward. Um, because what what's what was before is gone, what's now is temporary, and the future's looking bright. So what are you going to do to add to it? It bears repeating. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, Lauren, I, I know people are going to want to check you out. I actively encourage them to do so. Uh, the reason you're on the show is because I've got so much value from everything you share online. Please share with the audience the best way to get in contact with you and find out more about you. Absolutely. Well, you can certainly follow me on LinkedIn, um, uh, and it's Lauren at uh, on, on LinkedIn. But I think the best way is just to check out the website, check out the blog. It's pibworthps.com and you'll put that in the show notes yeah it's all going to be yeah. in the show notes uh, i'm going to yeah. find that link to the uh to the quiz blog bit you've got as well and put that in there too and uh, and people should definitely go and find out what their uh, marketing spirit animal is that was a very <laughs> informative quiz lauren i really want to thank you for your time today it's been you, you've get, delivered a ton of great value some really great information and insights and you have beautiful energy and it's been real a real delight to speak to you thank you so much oh thank you john it was really fun to be i hope here. you enjoyed this episode if you did please make sure you like and subscribe there are some great episodes coming up with some amazing guests and i wouldn't want you to miss a single one if you think you'd be a great guest on the podcast or you know someone who would i'd love to hear from you and always i'm happy to get any feedback that might help to improve the show as a coach and trainer i work with service business owners coaches trainers speakers authors in presentation skills both online and in person i help people to create and deliver additional products and services including webinars that make sales and to add residual income to your business I teach and train the tools of ethical influence and persuasion that can help you to stand out in the marketplace, to step up as a leader, and to communicate more effectively with clients, customers, and colleagues. If you would like to book in a free 20-minute no-obligation discovery call with me to find out if working with Present Influence is right for you, click the link in the show notes. Alternatively, visit presentinfluence.com, click on the contact page and you will find the link to book in there. I look forward to connecting with you and I look forward to you joining me again on the next episode of the Loki Podcast.